Hello there friendly neighbors and welcome back to our channel. Hello. Yes. Yes, it's our channel. You smell like fish. Why do you smell like fish? I don't have to explain myself to you. That's kind of gross. I have some news for you guys that might be a little bit shocking, but I do I do need to share it. I think it's time that I let you guys know, and that news is that I really like the dollar store. The dollar store. The dollar store, my favorite place in the world. I think it might be a borderline obsession at this point, but I don't really think that there's anything bad that's happening about, you know, my love for the dollar store. Nothing bad comes of it, so I feel like it's the sort of thing that I'm just gonna live with, you know? We're just gonna exist with this love for the dollar store, and that's gonna be my life. Completely unrelated, I'm getting bored of my cage. My ferret cage has had the same theme, the same liner, pretty much the same beds for the last couple months, and I'm bored. My ferrets might feel the same way, they might not feel this way at all because they're ferrets and they don't they don't really have opinions other than being loud in the background while I'm filming a video. Andromeda. Andy. My love for the dollar store and my desire to have a new cage theme. They make a beautiful marriage together. Today I am going to be redoing my ferret cage only with things I have bought from the dollar store. I purchased a few things. I got some blankets that I'm gonna be using to make the liners and the hammocks, and then also some ribbon that I'm gonna to use to make the tie-offs for the hammocks. I also got a little fabric pet cube, two beds, and a tablecloth. Don't question the tablecloth, we'll get to that eventually. Two, two things. I promise it'll only be two things. I feel like I normally tell you guys, oh, just a couple things before I get started, and then it's like 17 things, but today it really is just two things. First thing, not everything in my cage I'm going to be redoing. I know, okay, it's the title of the video that I'm redoing the stuff in my ferret cage. But the dollar store doesn't sell clip-on dishes, so that's something you really need, especially for the water dish in your ferret's cage. It's gotta be a clip-on, otherwise they're just gonna spill it. They do have stainless steel food dishes, but they have this like rubber lining on the bottom. My ferrets aren't really chewers, but I just, it's like a really soft rubber that I feel like they would decide that they wanted to chew, so we're just gonna avoid that. I'm keeping my same dishes. I am also not replacing the litter box, not because the dollar store doesn't have litter boxes, the dollar store has amazing litter boxes, but because I already have too many litter boxes, I don't need to buy a new one, and the litter box in their cage is actually already from Dollarama, so... I was just ahead of the game with that one. My dream for this was to originally stick with the Dollarama color scheme, their colors are, you know, yellow and green, which don't match my bedroom at all. Unfortunately, the dollar store doesn't sell a lot of the uh, green and yellow blankets and stuff, so I wasn't really able to make my dream come true, but I did find enough stuff to make the cage cover the Dollarama color scheme. So we're gonna be making the cage cover in this like green and yellow kinda eyesore that's gonna just really pop in my room and make everything look pretty bad. And then the inside, we're going for a nice soft kind of gray with a little hints of blue here and there. Last thing I'm gonna go over. I realize I lied to you. I said there were only two things and I think this is either the third or fourth thing, so. I dug myself into that hole again pretty quickly. The last thing that I wanna say is something that I say a lot of the time when I'm making cozy things for my ferrets and that's that my ferrets are non-destructive, they do not chew blankets, they don't really chew toys, they just don't have an interest in doing that and because of that I can use materials in my cage that a ferret that has a chewing problem is not going to be able to handle having in their cage. So if you see me doing something in this video that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be safe for your ferret, Know your ferret, know what they're okay handling, and if you do notice that they're chewing some sort of toy or fabric or liner or bed or something in their cage or outside of their cage, make sure that goes right in the garbage, take note of what it's made of, and see if that's possibly a material that you need to start avoiding. Safety warning over! I'm gonna cut some fabric now. Because I emptied my ferret cage, that means that I have to cut fabric while five ferrets are running around the floor. That's probably gonna end really, really badly. I basically just got a bunch of fleece and soft blankets and I'm gonna cut them and turn them into cage liners. This is, this is gonna be a thing, hey? Dealing with these little rats. Why don't you guys go to sleep, hey? Okay, okay, girls. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> girls, this is proving to be very difficult. We're off to a great start. 
Okay, 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 okay. This is not playtime. This is serious, okay? I'm absolutely not gonna do any of this properly because I just don't have time for that. We're just gonna do it the Kenya way, which is the improper way, but faster. Because the way I'm feeling is I'm gonna sew a side here and then sew that little thing out and that'll be it. That's all I need to do. God forbid I measure something. That would be a waste of time. And I'm all about efficiency. This line is extremely straight so far. I said I wasn't gonna pin it, but I do wanna pin it a little bit so that I remember how it goes together. And this fabric is also very slippery, so I feel like I feel like I should just pin it and save myself a headache later when it slips and just goes the, the wrong way. I'll go back and pin this more later. Well, don't hold me to that. And we're just gonna go for the same strat with this one, except it'll be a little bit easier. Flawlessly executed. For the smaller one, I'm going with a slightly different blanket, mostly because the uh, dollar store didn't have any more of those gray blankets, but it's still gray. It's kind of like a bluish gray, actually. Like I said earlier, I'm going for green and yellow on the outside because that's the Dollarama colors. So I found this fabric tablecloth, which is the perfect Dollarama green. It's so ugly. It's gonna look awful. I'm really excited. So I'm gonna be using this as the cage covers two sides. And then on the front, I'm gonna use this yellow blanket so that it just breaks it up a little bit and it's not quite as green screen green. I really hope I don't have to iron this. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get my iron. <laughs> also, my, my ferrets, I put them in their travel cage. They're not, <laughs> they're not running around while there's a hot iron on the floor, I promise. I'm a little more responsible than that. Not with myself, but with my ferrets. Okay, so the front of this, I got two blankets this size. Okay, with this one, I think I actually need to be careful about my seam allowances so that everything actually lines up. So this time I'm actually gonna be exact. Thirty seven inches. I don't really want to mark this out, so I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm being exact in the sense that I measured it, but I'm being not exact in the sense that I'm eyeballing the cutting of it. There. Now, for the back and the top, I'm hoping that I can recycle this blanket that is originally from Dollarama. I promise. I just couldn't find any more blankets that were sort of this color. So I just thought, you know what, I'll recycle the one I have at home that is going to otherwise just be going in my closet. Now, I need to iron this now. That's what I was gonna say. Imagine someone has this god-awful green tablecloth at whatever party you're going to. At that point, I would just leave, to be honest. If I show up and this, someone's got this bad boy spread across the table, that's a sign that you need to get out of there. There! I did it! There are our two side panels for the cage liner. And now let's see if I have enough fabric to make the top. I think I do. Okay, hear me out. We're gonna make it work. Cause we'll attach this, okay? It's not gonna be pretty, but it's gonna work. And at the end of the day, that's, if it works, it works. All right, I'm just gonna, yeah, these ones I'll just, we'll get there when we get there with these ones, you know? So here's a ladder. I'm making them out of this blue because I, I have some like blue accents that are going on the inside and I think making the ladders blue is gonna be cute. I mean, that looks good to me. And if it looks good, then that means it's gonna be golden. There. I've, I've cut out that stuff. I did it. 
Okay, we're back up here again, which is good because I was getting kind of uncomfortable on the floor. Now I haven't cut out any of the hammocks or anything yet, and that's just because I want to put together the big things, so the, the liners and then the cage cover before I do the hammocks, just in case I have made some sort of error in my flawless cutting technique, and I therefore need fabric. I'm going to start with the pan liners because those are easiest, and I, I'm feeling lazy, as promised. I'm pinning these, okay? In order to make this as dramatic as a grand reveal as I can for you guys, I'm going to be seeing if these fit off of camera, and you'll just be able to hear me. I should clip my corners. Hi, Mandy. Yeah, I'm making you something. I'm making you something. It's, it's always scary when mom says she's doing that. Let's see if this fits. Oh, it fits perfectly. That hardly ever happens to me. Like a glove, Mandy! Do you ever sew for like two hours and just get super stuck in the zone? The zone? It's a state of being that can happen for the best athletes. Like when batters can't see anything but the ball heading toward them. They're concentrating so intensely everything else goes dark. And so you pretty much forget that you're filming and you don't really talk to the camera for, you know, two hours. Oh, wow. Um... Well, yeah. So for the next two hours, it was just full of flawless sewing where I perfectly stuck to every plan of pinning everything. I don't think I need to pin this. It's pretty straight. I had absolutely no moments of self-doubt. If I'm honest, I don't know how long these <laughs> cage liners are actually gonna last me. And I just really loved every single second of it. Oh my god. That was the worst. It took forever. I got so bored. Once I was done with the liners, I put the cage cover together, and that, that went, um... Oh, these don't line up at all. Now, where should I... This looks terrible. Am I looking at this right? Okay, now we just say a little prayer to Ferret God that, um, that worked. The cage cover went super well. Now, I have some beds and stuff that I bought at the dollar store that are going to go inside of my cage, but obviously that's not going to be enough. I definitely need to make my ferrets a couple of hammocks. I want to for sure make them two. I'll see what extra fabric I have after that. I have these really cute little blankets to make the hammocks out of, and I think that this one might actually be the perfect size that I literally just have to attach hooks to it. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, it's a little big. I'm gonna use this ribbon to make the little loop-de-loops for... I don't even know where that thought was going. I took um this blanket, okay? I folded it over so that it fits the cage size I'm going for, and then I put some loops in it. You know, that's how you make a hammock now, I guess. <laughs> this is going over in the pile of things I've done. It fell. Oh, shoot. Oh, I made that look so bad. Look, from this side, it looks fine. This hammock is absolutely flawless. Um, if you flip it over, it doesn't have a seam that is just completely off because I had to do that. One more thing. I'm gonna make a little tunneling tunnel in the same sort of style that we did last video, except not in that style at all, actually, because I don't need to line this. So, ignore that. I do so believe that we are done. And now comes the terrifying part where I put everything together and I find out if I just wasted the last five hours of my life. We know the answer is gonna be yes, but... Well, here we have it, guys. The Dollarama-inspired ferret cage. You know how whenever I make something on my channel, I normally say, it genuinely surprised me how well it turned out. Well, this is not one of those times. It's not bad, okay? It's all right. The cage cover is just awful. It doesn't fit right. The color is absolutely terrible. This green bothers me so much, but I was going for a Dollarama theme, so I guess 
I, I did what I sought out to do. Eh, if you want to put a positive spin on it, but yeah, no, it looks, it looks pretty awful. Actually, you know what? That looks pretty good, but I like having a cage cover, so... Wait, what? Whoa, 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 wait. I just didn't end up using this. I bought it, but then I didn't use it. Problem solved. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because by doing all those things, you too can become a citizen of the friendly neighborhood. I just realized this is kind of pastel-y. It does match my room. I'll see you guys next week when I do something. I'm not quite sure what yet. I don't plan that far ahead. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody.